Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. We are so glad you could spend a little part of your weekend with us here on this uh, feeling like fall weekend. Uh, Absolutely, it <laughs> does. So maybe you snuggle in That's just right. a little bit and watch because I do hope everybody's going to enjoy this show. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, it, you know, snuggling is a, is a good good thing. Fires in the fireplace. We had we had frost on our pumpkin this morning at, at, yeah. out in Clifton, so it's, uh, you know, it's a great time of year. Well, today we're going to talk about something. We're, we're actually kind of continuing last week's program, but uh, talking about bulbs and perennials, but how they pertain to the fall four season garden. Yes, we will. What I'm hoping to show is a small garden, well, not small, small, but nevertheless, a small, small part. for me, a small <laughs> part of my garden, right beside the road, okay? And it is a Four Seasons garden, and you will even see, before the show is over, a picture of what that was like before it became a garden, mm. okay? And and I'm hoping if, if we can bring up the first picture to, since it's bulb time, it's time now to get out there and get those bulbs in the ground or in containers. I can't stress enough the container part of it too. All right, this is the garden that we will be talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, on the screen you're seeing the names of some evergreens. What I hope to convey today is that in these gardens, diversity is such a wonderful thing. Plants are so much healthier when you have diversity rather than a huge sweep of mm -hmm. just one thing. Somehow the bugs and the, the diseases seem to find that so much easier. But the names that are on the screen, Cephalotaxis, common name, Plum U, Hanoki Cypress, Green Spire Euonymus are three top of the list evergreens that are a part of the background of this garden. Evergreens play a part in this Four Seasons garden. What you're seeing right here is spring in that garden three or four years ago and pansies are in full bloom. Get them in now. Maybe the frost took out some of those annuals. It's time to do it, okay? So that is actually what our program today is going to be about. That's great. And then at the end of the show, uh, we'll be taking your phone calls too, so stay tuned for that. We've got a lot of information to uh, share with you. Before we get started, we've got several announcements, lots going on at Maryfield Garden Center, starting with our Fall Garden Festival that uh, is going on this weekend as well as the next two weekends, every weekend in October at our Gainesville location. Lots of fun. We're going to have hay rides, pumpkin painting, face painting, lots of activities for the kids, moon bounce, you know, one of those puffy slides type of thing. <laughs> lots of fun. And we'll have some plant specials and music, just lots of fun going on. Just get in touch with the season and enjoy the season. So that's every weekend uh, through the end of October at our, at our Gainesville location only. Our seminars today continue. Uh, at our Maryfield location. My dad is doing a seminar today on how to be a successful gardener. He's done this a couple of times and you know with, he's got 40 plus years of experience in this business and uh, he's, a, he's a great resource to, to Well be more than to. anything else he is so aware of the need not just to plant that plant properly but to water it properly. Mm -hmm. Without a it. doubt that is the one issue above all others when a plant fails is learning how to water. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's at 10 a.m. at the Maryfield Community Hall right next to our Maryfield location at Lee Highway and Gallows Road. At Gainesville today, David Yost is out there talking about critter control again at 10, 10 a.m. You know, we have a lot of uh, visitors in our, in our landscape that we may not want there, so he's got some uh, great strategies to help you uh, combat that or control that or <laughs> however you'd like to put it. So that's at 10 a.m. at our Gainesville location. Um, we uh, are not having a seminar at uh, Fair Oaks, but I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But next week, uh, our seminars will include evergreens, just for kids and walls, walks, and patios. And I do need to say on the just for kids one, our 10 o'clock uh, session is full. We, you know, we have to have some 
number have you signed up for that because we're it's an activity uh, but she has opened up another session at 1130 so if you'd like to you know call in or go on the website and sign up for that uh, that'll be great that that'll be at the just for kids will be at 1130 and I encourage you to do that this woman is so vivacious oh, Regina had just she has such uh, fun with the kids your I children you. will just Thrive Absolutely. <laughs> so be sure to pick up a, a copy of the seminar schedule. The seminars continue through the end of October. Then we take a, a, a couple week break and then we have our holiday things going on in November and uh, first part of December we'll have some holiday classes then. So okay. MaryfieldGardenCenter.com. It's on the web so if you'd like to access it that way that's great. Okay. Um, this weekend we're very fortunate to have members of the Washington Daffodil Society with us from 11 to 3 at all three locations today and tomorrow. We're so grateful for their help because this is bulb time and they're there yes. to answer your questions. It's time to get them in the ground. <laughs> it really, really is. Okay, and then we have two, as I mentioned before, we, we've got a couple of special events going on. So at our Fair Oaks location this weekend, the Old Dominion Chrysanthemum Society is going to be having their annual chrysanthemum show. And that is the a blast from the past. So this is our uh, event one here as, as we we're, we're terming that um, it is today and tomorrow and you can you can see the uh, the times there on the um, on the screen um, so in, enjoy that because it'll be all weekend long and that's at our Fair Oaks location at our Gainesville location we've got um, an auction this is tomorrow not today but tomorrow an auction of uncommon and deciduous azaleas uh, put on by the Northern Virginia chapter of the Azalea Society of America. And this is really unique. These are not plants that you can just get at a, at a garden center or, right. or uh, you know, they're very unusual and very different. So um, it, it's a great opportunity to do that. So All of these societies, when they have events, are well worth attending because these people have expertise beyond what you can even dream. Mm -hmm. They focused on that particular group of plants. And so they're always so willing to share their knowledge right. and share their information. So I encourage you to, to do those to the Mum Society today. Right. Those people will be there and they'll answer questions. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Well, we're running short on time but let's, yeah, let's give a couple let's pictures here. run through a few of these to sort of set the stage for right. what we are going to do mm -hmm. today and in the first picture it needs <laughs> to be fun okay this this is uh, a couple of years ago I want to focus a part of this diversity that we're going to talk about today includes what's beautiful in the fall and what will be there in the spring to say hello to you also I have discovered that unless we have really severe winters, kale comes through the winter. The cabbage, not necessarily, but the kale is spectacular. And of course, you're seeing some fun with the little scarecrow things. Those haven't gone up in my garden yet, but it's time for that <laughs> too. Welcome to the party. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then the next picture, again, a part of decorating. Industry again and enthusiasm of people out there in these in expertise in individual areas. This plant world is so big, there is no one of us that can possibly know about all of it. But people have been focusing on producing a lot of the old pumpkins, the old squashes, the old gourds, and they brought in and hybridized new ones. This is a stack of different kinds of pumpkins. The nice blue ones, Deb, I mm -hmm. love those. They're so fun. And under the bottom is a Cinderella, which is different tones of orange and green. And then sitting on the top is just a regular pumpkin, mm -hmm. okay? There's right. plenty of place for those <laughs> too. Uh, there was a time when I could put, would put a rebar maybe down through the center, but because of the stackability of the Cinderella's, you don't have to do right. that and they last a lot longer a that way, on the top. Mm -hmm. you can balance them. Right. I love to weave in the grapevine. So uh, remember this stack because you're going to see another one a little later on. That does look very Cinderella-ish with, yeah. with the grapevine going through. It does. Well, <laughs> I just think it's happy. Mm -hmm. Very happy. And in the next segment, we're, we will, as we go through this show today, talk about where you, where you plant those bulbs. Because, as I said last weekend, the love affair comes to an end 
when you put them in the wrong place. That's for sure. And then you've got to live with all that dying mm -hmm. foliage, which, if you don't, isn't going to make next year's bulb. And so I will try to show you where I have used these to great effect and to the bulb's benefit. Great. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Peg's going to go to our virtual garden with some great tips for great planting. Fall is such a happy time of the year. I love it when the temperatures cool down a little bit and the mosquitoes go away. And this is my roadside garden and it's where I've been working for the last couple of weeks so that I could bring this program to you today. And what a fun thing it's been because when I'm working out beside the garden at the beginning or the end of the day, all the passers-by I have the opportunity to visit with and and that's a very good thing. I enjoy this garden. It's a teaching garden, but everybody who comes by has the opportunity too. And as I said, diversity is the top of the thing. Okay, roadside garden. You saw in the first segment what it looked like when it was filled with bulbs in the spring. Those bulbs are here now, okay? But you don't see them. You will see them in the spring. Now, with the exception of some of the tulips, some of those have to be replaced from time to time, as I will do again this season. All right, what's going on here? It's actually, let me be sure that you can see, it's actually divided so that there is a little walk-through area into a small garden in the back of the list. But it's a long narrow at the one end and much, much broader here. We talked about the importance of a mixture of plants. There's a place for evergreens everywhere. They serve a major purpose. The, here, it's part of the background, which helps make everything else look better. And we talked about the plum yew and the euonymus and the hanoki cypress, so they're there. And make note of the fact that there's a great plant right here that we'll talk more about as we go along a lot of perennials in here. Perennials for the spring, perennials some in the summer, and then a few for fall. The only place that I really have room for annual color, and I do leave space for that because annuals serve their purpose. Now in the fall through the winter and into the early spring, pansies and violas serve that purpose. But you're going to see the addition of kale throughout this because when it goes through the winter, it puts on a huge display of beautiful yellow flowers. So let's go to the next slide and see a closer view, okay, as we progress down through there. Now you can see that little entrance over in here that goes back into a smaller garden back there. But you are seeing color even though it's not color in blossom, you're seeing color in the purple kale with the white kale. You have perennials that are still in bloom, perovskia, daisies, uh, chrysanthemums, but I've added a lot of pansies too. You'll see more of that. Let's progress through these pretty quickly because I do have a lot of them. I want you to see what's in this garden right now. Okay, looking back on this, Look at the role that those kale play. There's many different kinds, the taller ones, the shorter rounded ones, and it's playing with those evergreens behind it. It wouldn't look nearly as good without them. Okay, let's roll to the next one. What's in there? Dahlias. Time to get those dahlias out now. Cut them back, store them inside where they won't freeze. Time to get out the tender colocasias that are back here also. Let's keep going with this. I want you, if you don't have this plant, to go invest in it. This is Amsonia hubrecti. It is a big part of that garden. It is not in color right now, but it will be coming up this week. This looks like bigger than life, it isn't. It's about three feet tall, okay, and, and established about three feet wide. And this is last year's color. It has not reached that yet. And the next one, please. 
What else is here near the front of the border because it blooms and it's variegated? Abelia. All that is just behind me. And it's about two and a half feet tall, two and a half feet wide. Works well here. Next to it's the evergreen of the boxwood too. So you've got an intermingling of that. You can see in the background also back here, the tall fall anemones. They like some shade, so they're back a little further. And they're in bloom now. Beautiful varieties at the garden center. So please, now is the time while they're in bloom, come in, find what you like and get it in. This is the great time to do that. And the next one, please. Contrast, you can see the Amsonia hubrecti, which is between the evergreens and the front part of this, is now just beginning to color. And look at the blue of that kale. You've got that blue contrasting with the gold, contrasting with the green behind it. And the next one, please. We're running out of time. I always put more in than it'll fit. Okay, here's the purple. This one is kale, red boar. Look at the contrast with that wonderful chrysanthemum. The, this particular one is a spoon. It's a lovely thing. It's a new perennial one that you'll find in the perennial section. And the next one, please. I plant my tulips and the taller growing things well back into the border and between my perennials. I will be planting these tulips next, beginning next week. It's time to do that. And I color coordinate and try to change the emphasis from year to year. And you will notice I use pine straw to top it all off with. Number one, it covers a multitude of sins, okay, which every now and then you need to do. But more than anything else, it's most attractive and helps some of these things get through the winter. Let's go to the next one. All right, here are those kale and the varieties that you have to choose from. And the next one, please. Okay, geranium roseanne. It is a perennial. It is one of the most satisfactory perennial geraniums that I have ever grown. It's a little rangy and weaves into other things. Love it. And the next one, please. Some things happen by accident. I have the annual Angelonia in here. I may not have it after tonight, okay? Which is perfectly all right. It's time for it to go. Beautiful plant. Put it on your docket for next year. Can't beat it. But look at, the, look at the wonderful color with that kale, the angelonia, and now the pansies. I've color coordinated it. Now I have, as I said, put more into this segment than would fit, but we'll be back with you in a moment and I'll probably do the same thing on the next one. Welcome back to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. And I hope that you will enjoy today because it's a joy to me, it's a joy to share with people, and it's a joy to learn. I have learned by doing that these kale are just such spectacular plants and they blend so well with the pansies and there are so many different colors. I frequently hear the customers say, I'm, uh, I'm a little confused, I don't know which one to choose, but choices have to be made. <laughs> and so I, I love the purples and the oranges and all of that. And so I really sort of did a little piece de resistance as a part of that thing. And I gathered my grasses and wrapped them into a nice little arrangement back by the fence and cut some of my paracantha and tucked it in for the, the background as the decoration. And then I stacked some of these pumpkins. One, two, three, if you can see of the Cinderella's and then some of the regular pumpkins and repeat it a little bit down to the front, which you can't see all of them right here. Okay, there are perennials in here. We've got a gorgeous Caryopteris and you can see that now again at the gardens. It's a good time to look for those perennials that are good to the fall and tuck a few of those in with the things that are beautiful in the spring. 
it's it's a variegated perennial and in front of it you can just barely see some of the RNG perennial mums which are so pretty but look now at not just the color and by the way the color will be more intense as the cold increases there's the purple and the contrast of textures running through here and then I've done a color pickup with the purples and the whites in the pansies and the violas and I have mixed of them and I've used a little bit of the soft yellow because that just gives it a little pizzazz and in the next one please it's a little broader view so that you let me step back completely now you can see a little bit of the repetition of the pumpkins and the mass of the pansies there it's going to be beautiful this fall hopefully we won't have a terribly severe winter and it'll be beautiful next spring so it is time to do it now next one please we're going to have to roll through some of these i wanted you to see this is what's going to happen next week i am going to have all those beautiful perennial chrysanthemums coming into bloom in a part of that garden and I probably will not have this when I get home because it's a tender annual and when it goes okay this is the main show okay here's the next one please that is what it was like 15 plus years ago when things changed in our neighborhood and I thought okay I get a lot of sun up here this is the opportunity to have the garden beside the road where the race of men go by. Let's see what happened to it. Okay, springtime. Next one, please. Coordinate your colors. Uh, maybe, and hey, if you like all of them together, do it that way too. Always remember, you have no apologies to make for your own garden. It's yours. Okay, gold and white beautiful color pick up here with the pansies down below this is springtime and uh, boxwood i can't do without boxwood next one please guess what's going on on that wall clematis clematis as you wish i love these plants they can be a little persnickety now and then but I go through that and every now and then have to replace one. They are worth it. They are one of the queens of the garden. And a bulb. A bulb you need to get in now. I can encourage you to plant more and more and more of these alliums and there's different kinds. This is an allium. Let's go with the next. This is the garden in summer. I wanted you to see what it looks like in the peak of the summer season. This is when the perennials really put on a major show. We have a few evergreens, dwarf evergreens in the front. I love alyssum. All down in the front. After the pansies come out, the alyssum goes in. There are lilies, there's phlox, there's nicotiana, but we'll see more of this as the program progresses and we will be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh. Yes, the Japanese anemone is what we came in on. A wonderful fall flower. Mm -hmm. Great. About two and a half feet tall. Great. Very graceful. Well, Peggy is back over with me <laughs> out of her virtual garden, but we have a few more things to show you out of that yeah. uh, that beautiful roadside garden. Yeah, what, a, what a difference from the original picture, you know, when you showed mm -hmm. it, what it looked like before. Whew. But the progression has been fine and the learning is fine and we will have to go these through these pretty quickly because it was important to be able to show you all of the various parts of the list mm -hmm. because it is a part of that four season show and diversity. Here are the oriental lilies. Now, I wondered where they were and I asked the young man, James, out at the Ferrex location and he tells me there's going to be quite a shipment coming in next week 
go get them, go plant them, go get them in the ground. This is one of the most satisfying mm -hmm. bulbs that you can put in. Gorgeous. And the next picture you're going to see a combination of bulbs. You're, you will see the lilies. Now this is in that same garden and you're going to see a play of allium. The, the brighter color, the purple colors have gone by, but they are beautiful even after that. And in the next picture, perhaps you can see uh, a greater diversity of them. There's many different varieties, and when you plant several of them, not only do the heights vary, but so does the size of the heads. And this is the center of that bed. You can see the evergreens behind it to give you a little perspective. Now this, this area is pretty deep. I'm gonna say it's 25 feet, okay? Because it's got a lot going on there. The following picture, again, in, in a little later summer, is the use of the Nicotiana and a lot of the annuals that I do tuck in be between some of these perennials. I love the birds, the bees, and the butterflies. Mm -hmm. And boy, do they come. I have done a few salvia. I vary the annuals through the years just because everybody wants something a little different, for goodness sakes. And in the next picture, okay, on this garden, on the other side, is the little fairy garden, mm -hmm. which Debbie's very familiar oh, with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can peek through those evergreens. And when you peek through those evergreens, this is what you see beside the road. You're seeing some allium. And it is just these alliums, I can't tell you how wonderful they are. Next picture, please. There it is, summertime. Looking back on that so you can get perspective. There's echinacea. Ah, oh, what a wonderful plant. And do the butterflies love that. And don't cut it back if you've got it. Let it stand because the seed heads are attractive and my, the birds just love it. Following picture, please. Again, summer annuals, you see the Gloriosa daisies, which is a Rudbeckia. You're seeing that Caryopteris and Phlox in bloom with geranium in front of it. And in the way back of this, again, are evergreens. These happen to be large white pines that uh, the neighbor put in. And, and here again, we talk about diversity. They're beginning to have a little trouble with this. Why? Because at some point in the game, people overplanted um, the white pines, and they're just such a magnificent plant that they began to have some disease problems, and he's lost a couple of them in here, which is very disappointing. But we'll be replacing that with something that will work, and, and hopefully with the diversity, he won't lose the others. Next picture, please, is the allium after it goes totally out of bloom. Allium schuberti. Schuberti. If you really want to have fun, once this goes by and it looks fragile and isn't, take a spray can of purple paint out there and <laughs> paint it up, okay? Have a little fun. And you see perovskia, and you see the daisies, and you see a lot of perennials going on. A close-up in the next picture is that same allium, allium schuberti, which is so beautiful even when the major blooms are gone. Following picture is another plant that, if you leave it in the ground, be sure that you cut it back when frost gets it. This is the canna. And then put, this is rare that we tell you to put mulch on top of plants, but put a little mulch on top. I love the pine straw. And here again, I need to tell you, I know at our Fair Oaks location, we're expecting a delivery of pine straw next week. So pine straw is fantastic for giving these people some cold help. And the following picture again is a wonderful summer exposure of Cleome and the grasses. Grasses are a beautiful, beautiful part of the garden. This one happens to be an annual, but there are some perennial grasses that are low growing and can serve the same purpose. You are seeing Nicotiana, the variegated Caryopteris, which we've got some beauties of that, and Sedum, which is lovely. So this is the late fall thing. Now, 
I want to step. No, we've yeah. got one more picture so, here. Okay. After all this is finished, you need to sit back, relax, and enjoy it. This is the back part of that garden. That has more shade. It is in front of those pine trees. And so it has hasta, it has small grasses, it has a lot going on. But don't you want to go and join me in a little conversation with um, all those beautiful plants and visit with the people that pass by? I love it. And now if we can come back to where I'm standing. I want to share with you because I said this is a Four Seasons garden. It is a garden that has diversity and is therefore a healthier garden. Evergreens are a major part of that. What you did not see in the pictures today because it is behind the evergreens that we talked about is a plant that is so severely underplanted it's a shame and I want to feature it today. This is a wonderful camisiparous, cripsy, cripsy. It has a golden cast to it. Over time it can get to be 15 feet. Mine has not over a long period of years. Why? Because I get my little ladder out and at Christmas time, I trim the ends of it. It is spectacular for Christmas arrangements. And it is beautiful in the garden. It'll grow in sun, it'll grow in part shade. What more do you want? Totally beautiful. Well, Peg, I'm gonna take that away, take that away from you and, and uh, tell you that we're gonna take a little break. And when we come back, we're gonna take your phone calls. So if you have any questions, please give us a call, 703-387-1046. We'll talk to you in just a couple of minutes. There again, that little stack is the little small ones, small pumpkins again stacked because they stack so well. You have to right. cut the you have to cut the stem back so it's balanced, you know. Now, have you hot glued this? No, all? I didn't. Really? Okay. No, they're so, just oh, yeah, I balanced. See. Don't move too much. Okay. <laughs> no, they're just balanced. Okay. And, and actually, <laughs> even with this one, I wanted to diversify some, so I um, put different ones up there. A great. It, it makes a I great love, table decoration. I know. I love know? the big ones, but I love the small <laughs> ones even more. I just think they're so cute. I like so them all. Cute. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're taking your phone calls. So if you have any questions, please give us a call. 703-387-1046. Peggy, our first caller today is Nancy, who's calling from Arlington. Hi, Nancy. Good morning. You, you there, Nancy? Hello? I'm here. Oh, there I'm you good. are. Great. Good, good morning. morning. How are you? I'm good. Good. What can uh, we do for you? My question is, I have an iris, and it looks like the bulbs are protruding from the ground, and I'd like to split it. Is this a good time to split it and move it? I suspect that you have the German iris, which is a rhizome, and it needs to be slightly above the ground. Oh. That's the way you plant those, Nancy. Um, they need that air, and they need excellent drainage, and they are magnificent. I said that the Clematis clematis is one of the queens of the garden. These tall bearded iris are also one of the queens of the garden. Not a long period of bloom, but you want to take your chair and sit down beside it and enjoy it, okay, because it's magnificent. <laughs> does have one problem and that's with borers but anytime you see a little green darker green fleck going down the leaves if you cut below that you can discourage that borer okay oh okay now is a great time to get out there and divide those give them some room when you replant them be sure that they have excellent drainage in fact, one of the areas where I grow my best, I have topped it off with some pea gravel. 
okay. so that I don't even have mulch around it, okay? But this, the drainage is good. And cut that fan back, okay? And it should be just fine. Do I cut the leaves, the, the spiky leaves? Cut the leaves? leaves back to make a fan out of them, okay? Like so. Back. If okay. there's any dead looking, pull it away or cut it away. Okay, great. Yes. And you'll enjoy them. If you make those divisions too, too small, you're going to have a couple of years wait before you get it. So while you're dividing them, don't do it too severely, okay? Okay. And enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, let's see. Our next caller is CJ, who's calling from Washington. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, CJ. What's your oh. question? Okay, my question is about, uh, well, I have kind of two quick questions. One is about my flower bed, and I have black-eyed Susans and cornflowers and uh, coral bells, and I wanted to know about mulching flower, bell, um, <laughs> flower beds now, and should I go ahead and mulch them? Put mulch on them. I put mulch down when I have time. Mm -hmm. Okay, doesn't really matter, or I want to make something look beautiful. Um, and certainly, I just that's this last week was putting mulch down. Now you've got to remember that you do have, if you have leaves, you've got to rake those leaves out. So you have the alternative to go ahead and mulch now, which is fine, mm -hmm. or to um, rake out the leaves when they fall and then put the mulch down. Now you're going to hear a lot of people say, don't mulch until the ground freezes. I, in all my years, have never abided by that for a number of reasons. For one thing, the days are so short, I have no time to get out there and do it after that. For the next thing is, my body doesn't want to be out there doing it anyway <laughs> when it's really cold. So I mulch when I can. And, and when I rake the leaves out, I just do it carefully because there needs to be mulch. Okay, my Go other ahead quick, and do it, honey. <laughs> okay, my other quick question is that I'm also a container gardener, and I have right. jasmine and I have lavender. Um, and bringing them, bringing them in, or putting them in my garage. Which, which should I do? Uh, Don't bring them in. Uh, well, well, the jasmine depends upon which one, okay, and how big the container is. You might need to bring that in to a place where it gets at least some light to overwinter it. Not the lavender. It, it certainly would resent being brought in, okay, because okay. it needs more light. Okay. If if the container is big enough. And it's in a sunny spot that's slightly protected. Hopefully, it'll go through. No okay. guarantees, but that's container gardening. All right, then. Thank okay, you thank so you. very much. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, our next caller is Joe. And are you calling from Centerville? Yeah. Hi, how are you? All right. What can we do for you today? Okay. Um, I have, um, first of all, I ran into them. David Yost at the Giant Store, <laughs> and I, I think he said he lives in Centerville. Mm -hmm. He lives there. But um, any, the, the question I have is, I have a bush in the back of my house, just leaning up against the back of the house, and it has uh, red stems, and then it has these berries on it. And I'm trying to determine whether I should just cut it down, pull it out. <laughs> I assume the berries are not edible, and. Um, it almost look like blackberries or blueberries. I don't know what to do with it. You know, I'm, I'm doing some guesswork here, okay, because I can't actually see it. But it sounds like it might very well be a red choke berry, okay, which uh, some are black and some are red. And uh, while we may not eat it, the birds do. Do you have a digital camera or can you take a picture with your phone? If so, take a picture uh, and no, bring it. Okay, sorry about that. Um, to determine whether or not you should cut it down is very difficult for me right now because I, I can't see where it is or the value of it. If you don't like it, cut it down, okay, and put something else there. It's about that simple. Yeah. If it's serving a great right. purpose, don't cut it down, okay? That, I hope, is not a non-answer to you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Have a, have a great weekend. Yeah. Take care. 
Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have more of your questions. Stay tuned. Sure. What was going on? But I, I would appreciate it. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Okay, our next caller is Carl, who's calling from Alexandria. Hi, Carl. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Yeah, I have a cutting of uh, Wandering Jew. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it from my neighbor, and it's in a vase, and it's growing some pretty long roots right now. I was just wondering mm -hmm. if I could plant it outside now, or should I wait till the spring? Uh, you cannot plant it outside right now. I have the most magnificent pot of Wandering Jew just out on my deck, and I think it made it through, because I don't think that we had that much frost at my house, if any. And I, I would love to have room to bring it in, but I don't. It is a magnificent plant, but it will not grow over winter, Carl. So oh. uh, you can pot up those things that are rooted already and probably have better luck. Even in a small pot, just put it where you won't forget to water it and winter it in the house. You have oh. to do that. Oh, thank you very much. Won't do it outside. Thank you, girl. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, let's see. Louise is calling from Springfield. Hi, Louise. Louise, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What can we do for you today? I have some oxalis that are outside in my garden, and is there a way I can, like, dig them up and put them in something so I can plant them again next spring? You absolutely can dig those and put them in a little container and grow them over winter in the house. They make a beautiful house plant, actually. Some of them are very hardy outside and will go through the winter. That's always a little bit of a chance. And so if you really want to be sure that you can do that, pot them up into a container that the root system will fit into, overwin them in the house, and they can go back out. In fact, you can divide them when they go back out after frost is over. Several different least. kinds. Well, bring them in. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Take care. Okay, let's see. Dolores is calling from Bowie. Hi, Dolores. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you for mm -hmm. taking my call. Sure. A uh, few calls back, you were talking about the irises. Yes. And uh, I have been working in my backyard, and I have some irises that I planted last year. Yes. And I noticed that they're in bloom. There are re-bloomers. Isn't blooming? that exciting? Yes. I know it was. In yeah. fact, I started to cut them and bring them in, and then I thought, no, I'm going to leave them out and see what happens. Yeah, well, you, you perhaps will get even more bloom by doing that. And if you want the little individual bloom, you can just, you know, snip it off, put right. it in a short vase and bring it in if you'd like to do that, because I do sometimes. But there are a lot of new re-blooming bearded iris on the market. I see. So you've obviously got one of them. I sure did. And Enjoy. <laughs> uh, one other question. My roses. Yes. Um, some are bushes and some are just, they just lay flat. Uh, okay. The bushes, should I cut them all the way to the ground? Everybody has a little different philosophy on this where roses are concerned. I personally would trim back only far enough to keep these from beating around in the winter time, okay? okay? And save the heavy pruning for March. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Take care. You Have a great bye -bye. weekend. Okay, let's see. Ed is calling from Fairfax. Hi, Ed. Yeah, hi. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Peggy, I want to plant some garlic. And uh, uh, are there garlic sets that you can buy, like onion sets? Or would I have to go to the store and buy the regular uh, garlic? And uh, if so, uh, would I cut each garlic clove in half to get a few more and then set the flat parts in the dirt and uh, cover them up? So I was curious about that. I am she just <laughs> happens to have. No, this is no. this actually is not a garlic. This is one of those giant alliums, and you can't. It's not. You can't. You never know what you're going to pull from behind this desk. I tell you. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question because I'm a garlic person. I inherited that from my mother. She always had huge patches of garlic, and I love it. And a lot of people don't know that. Garlic can be harvested in late summer, maybe even now, 
and if you've got it and the smaller bulbs put back into the ground because over winter all those that wonderful fall green foliage grows over winter and through the spring and then dies back to the ground in the early summer and that's when you can harvest it okay so this is a wonderful thing if you have it in the garden this bulb is one piece. Usually garlic has cloves and you pull it apart and you plant those cloves individually because they will grow into a bigger garlic and that's what you're after. Yes, we do sell garlic sets and several different varieties and we sell so many and I'm so glad because it's such a wonderful plant that there'll be more in next week and so come in and and get those there are different varieties but i'll tell you i have fallen in love with elephant garlic so plant some and enjoy in good health because it's supposed to be good for you okay thank you so much i think we may we may have lots of but we've run out of time okay. right what a great uh, show go. lots of great ideas Garden, go garden. Tomorrow's That's supposed right. to be beautiful. That's right. I'm going to be in the garden all day. All right. I'm going right. to be planting my bulbs and finishing up with some of the containers, and I'm going to put some bulbs in the containers. Great. Don't, Don't forget. forget the seminars this weekend, the mum show, the azalea auction tomorrow. Lots going on at Maryfield right. Garden Center. Have a great week.